Okay, so in this video, I wanna show you how we can fix skin tone in Lightroom, but this is actually gonna be a two-part video. The first part, I'm gonna show you the main technique on a number of different images. In the second part, I wanna show you how we can automate the process and miss out some of the steps. I'm also gonna show you something extra about masking in Lightroom that you might not know, and I've also got some details about a download for you. But let's just dive in and show you the main technique first of all. All right, so in Lightroom then, I've got this image open, which we can clearly see the skin tones are, they're a little bit off. They look a little bit too kind of yellowish, a little bit greenish. And the way I'm gonna fix this is in Lightroom, again, this is uh, suitable for Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Desktop, whatever version you're using. I'm actually gonna come over to the color mixer section and we have this point color. And all I'm gonna do is click on this uh, sampler here, take it over to the skin tone and just click down to sample some of that skin tone just there. That then places it within a little swatch. I've done a much bigger video earlier on on my YouTube channel taking you through how to use this point color in a lot of detail. But looking at it as it is now, when we have uh, using point color, at the very bottom we have this visualize range checkbox. And if I just turn that on, what you'll notice within the image is that part, some parts of it go gray and some parts remain in color. So basically what this means is that the color areas that remain are the ones that will be affected. The gray areas won't be affected. Now, obviously, I'm looking to work only on the skin tone, but we can see that part of his clothing here is still being included. Now, we can come over to the hue range, the saturation range, and the luminance range, and also use this range slider to try to kind of refine the selection, if you like, that's being made here so that it is only restricted to the skin tones, but that's a little bit more work than we really need to do. There's another way that we can do it, and that's what I'll show you now. So let me just delete this little swatch here. I'll right click on it and choose delete all swatches. And we're not gonna use the main color mixer section. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the masking section first of all. And when I first open that, you can see here that the uh, Lightroom technology looks to see is there a person or people within the image. You can see here it's identified there's one person, and when I put my cursor over it, there you see it covered with the red overlay. Now, if I tap down on that, it then analyzes it even further to see what masks can it make from that particular person within the image. And you can see here there's loads of different ones. Facial skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, iris and pupil, lips, hair and clothes. Now, all I wanna do really is work on the skin tone, but, I'm at, but I am actually gonna include uh, any kind of facial hair or any hair as well, like eyebrows and, and hair on the head, because that will also, if the skin has got a bit of a cast to it, so will that. So here I'm going to click on facial skin. I'm going to include body skin, eyebrows. I'm going to leave the eyes out. I am going to include the lips and I'm going to include the hair as well. And then I'll click on create mask. So now in the masking section, we can see all these individual masks are here, but Rather than me actually making individual masks, it's made it into one complete mask, which is what we want. We don't want to have individual masks for all those parts. This is what I want, one main mask, mask here. The great thing is, now that we have this mask, within that, we can now dive into point color. So again, I'm gonna get this little sampler. I'm gonna bring it over to the skin tone. In fact, first of all, let's just check in, let's just go to the light section. Looks like his skin has been darkened a little bit there. So let's just dive into the tone. Yeah, we can see here the exposure's gone down. So I'll just double click to reset that back to normal. Let's just turn off the overlay. There you go, the skin's back to normal. And I'll go to point color. So I'll bring the sampler over and I'll sample some of the skin tone on this gentleman's cheek just there. That puts it in. If I now go to this visualized range, you can see that some of the actual facial skin there has gone gray and some remaining in color. So we need to include everything within that selected area on his face and all this little bit of the body skin, which is just this tiny little bit is recognized here of his wrist and the top of his hand. So to make sure that everything is included within those selected areas, I need to increase the range of the hue, saturation, and luminance. So all I'll do within the point color here is just drag out each of these um, kind of range areas here so that it covers the entire range from left to right. There we go. So now look, if I turn that off and on, no areas on his face or on his wrist and hand go gray, which means that everything now has been uh, picked up by me increasing the range. So all I need to do is then come to the hue, shift, saturation, and luminance 
And rather than me having it like it is at the moment where there's kind of like a very warm, yellowy, greenish cast on his face, I'm going to take this hue shift the opposite way to bring in some more red. Let me just see if I can zoom in just a touch actually on there. Something like that. There we go. So you can see here I can bring up the red. It's not too far. I'll take it to maybe around about there. Actually, I don't want to zoom in quite so close. Let's take that down to maybe 100. There we go. And we'll close that down. All right. So use the hue shift somewhere like that. Could take out some of the saturation. And I can also use the luminance just there as well, which works nicely. But look, if I just now go to this little eye icon here, I can press down and release to see the before and after. And it's not until you do that that you really do see how much of a cast there was on the skin. So that works really, really well. So let's just close that one down and let's just have a look at another image here. So I'll go to this one here of my friend Ian. So again, I'll go to the masking. It'll identify that there is a person within the image. We'll click on the thumbnail. It then says, right, you've got all these masks available to you. So again, I'm going to include facial skin, body skin. So it picks up his wrists. Uh, we've got the eyebrows, lips, and hair. This bit at the bottom here, I've made uh, five areas active, five different masking areas active. And you can see here, look, create five separate masks. That is left unchecked because we want to have one complete mask. So we click on create mask. It does it very quickly and we can see it here. There's the mask, including all of it. So again, we go to point color. Let's just get rid of the overlay and I'll sample some of his skin tone just there. Again, we can see, look, part of it is going to go gray. Part of it remains in color. So we haven't got all of the tones within his skin in there. So I'll increase the range completely, covering the whole of this tonal range from left to right by dragging out these left and right sides just there. And then again, I can just use this hue, saturation, or luminance shift to get the skin tone looking how I want. So let's just warm that up just a little bit by coming over to the reds. Might decrease the saturation on it a touch. And again, we've got access to that luminance. I mean, that there has taken seconds to move those sliders. You could spend a lot longer kind of finessing it, but already look, if I turn that off and on, off and on makes a huge, huge difference. Right, let's close that one down. And I'll go to one more. This one just here for now. This is my friend Mac. We'll zoom out on this one. Don't need to zoom in quite so close. And again, his skin tone here looks a little bit sickly, almost jaundiced, a little bit yellowy, a little bit greenish. Definitely needs to have some red brought back into it. So I'll go to the masking. It identifies that, mask, uh, that Mac is there. And this is what's interesting. Look, if I click on this mask here, what you'll notice is there is an additional mask. And that's really important because in the second part, this what the, what the masks give us each time we click on a person is going to be really important when we do try to automate this. And that's what I'm going to explain in that second part. But for now, we're going to go for facial skin, eyebrows, lips, hair, and facial hair. Again, not leaving a tick in the checkbox just there. We want an individual mask combination of all of these here. So I click on Create Mask. And we'll go to the point curve. Let's just click on that sampler, take a sample of the skin. Maybe I'll go for, I'll go for this little bit just underneath his eye just here. I know that that visualized range is going to miss bits. There you go, look, see? So what I will do is I'll just increase this range. Let's just all the way from left to right. So every single hue, saturation, and luminance range within that portrait is captured. And then we can just use the hue shift to give it a quick change from there. So add a little bit of red in. Saturation, we could take that out or increase it. I might actually increase the reds on that. Let's just go to about there. And the brightness, the luminance, we can go to there. Literally taking just a few seconds to make quite a dramatic difference. Again, if I go before and after, before and after. So you can see just by using this increasing the hue, saturation, and luminance range, how we capture everything within that masked out area, how easy it is then just to come in and make quite a dramatic difference by just moving a few of these sliders just there. So again, before and after, before and after. So there you go. That's how we can fix skin tones very, very easily within Lightroom using that masking and also the point color. Uh, this technology, for those of you who aren't using Lightroom, obviously you can do the same in Camera Raw because it's the same kind of technology. Now, there is more that I want to cover on this where I go through how we can automate this process so that you can do this 
but not have to do quite so many steps. Uh, I want to show you a little bit extra about masking and also some details of a download, a preset download for doing this as well. And that's going to be for newsletter subscribers only. I want to kind of give my newsletter subscribers something a little bit exclusive. So if you want to get a hold of that, you just need to go to this URL, which I've also put in the description part of this video. But for this video, that's the main bulk of the technique. They're showing you how you can fix the skin tones. So if you've liked it, if you've got something from it, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.